The Little Black Book. The Little Black Book. The Little Black Book. I've been meaning to do a segment on this for three months now. I just didn't know how to go about doing it. I was going to do a dramatic reading of the text and put up the actual pages for you to read along. However, in order for me to do that, I would have had to change the name of that program to Black and Right X. The language is so graphic that I couldn't even air this during normal viewing hours. And this book was distributed to hundreds of kids, middle school age and up, at Brookline High School, Brookline, Massachusetts, on April 30th, 2005. It was written by the Boston-based AIDS Action Committee with the help of the Massachusetts Department of Public Health and the Boston Public Health Commission. The event that day was designed for children and their teachers across Massachusetts and organized by the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network. Now, I know some of you out there are saying, there goes Bob, gay bashing. First of all, I could care less about anyone's sexual orientation. Problem is, there are people out there who make it their business to let you know theirs within five minutes of meeting them. It would be like me getting a new job, and on my first day, I go around to everyone and say, Hi, I'm a heterosexual man, and I have sex with women. Hi, I'm a heterosexual man, and I have sex with women. Hi, I'm a heterosexual man, and I have sex with women. Now, how long would it take before that got back to the boss and he or she either tells me that I'm contributing to a hostile work environment or it's just not working out and we're gonna have to let you go? I could give a damn who's gay or not. I just don't like people who get in your face and stay there. Gay activists bug me just as much as anti-abortion activists. I hear your message. When I've heard enough and I want to walk away, don't get in my face. But back to the book. I know politicians are busy signing bills into law and all that. Hopefully, they're capable of reading what they signed. At face value, either these people were uninformed, didn't realize what can now be distributed, or they thought this kind of literature would never reach their schools. It could have been mixed in with other legislation, but that doesn't mean they had to sign it. Bet you if somebody slipped in a line about some legislation that all the reps and senators would no longer receive pension benefits, the whole bill would have died. This book is basically explaining to kids the different ways to have sex, where to go to find people who want to have sex, and what kind of diseases kids can catch if they're not careful while having sex. John R. Diggs, MD, regarding The Little Black Book, wrote the following statement. Dr. Diggs has written and lectured on the subject of sexually transmitted diseases. Clearly, this material, which appears to have the endorsement of the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, is barely fit for consumption by swine, much less the youth of the Commonwealth. The brochure says, no HIV, as if condoms have been shown to stop HIV. At best, there is an 85% reduction in transmission among stable couples engaged in intercourse. There is no such ballpark number for use in anal sodomy, heterosexual or homosexual. Most data on condom use and STD prevention is based on intercourse, not sodomy. Sodomy is clearly riskier. The brochure is patently wrong. Massachusetts Department of Health, where are you, when it states that other STDs are dramatically diminished by condom use? The National Institute of Health reviewed widespread data which showed that there is an absence of convincing epidemiological data that condoms prevent the transmission of herpes, syphilis, chlamydia, human papillomavirus, and cancroid. The rates of anal cancer caused by HPV infection are very high and can be fatal. Condoms have not been shown to significantly reduce this risk. The standard condom is not built to withstand the increased friction associated with anal sodomy. Even with intercourse, the slippage and breakage rates approach 10%. Lastly, the brochure mentions abstaining from risky activity with tongue-in-cheek, but how much fun is that? They promote fun over safety. It is alarming disheartening and medically unethical that this information be distributed to anyone, that it is distributed at taxpayer expense to vulnerable and confused youth should awaken every citizen and legislator to immediately defund this organization and the Attorney General to pursue prosecution for endangering minors on a grand scale. It doesn't matter if this was part of a bill to feed the homeless, fight domestic abuse, or whatever excuse you might hear. 
It's bad enough that this is aimed at kids, but what is worse is that you and I are forced to pay for it. How? Check it out. Here is the law as it reads. It's got a lot of legalese, but the main paragraph pretty much says it all. Chapter 3 of the General Laws is hereby amended by adding the following section. Section 67. There shall be a permanent commission on gay and lesbian youth, which shall consist of 27 persons as follows. Three persons appointed by the Massachusetts chapter of the National Association of Social Workers, three persons appointed by the Massachusetts Coalition for Suicide Prevention, two persons appointed by the Fenway Community Health Center, four persons appointed by the Greater Boston Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays, two persons appointed by the Massachusetts Gay and Lesbian Political Caucus, one person appointed by Mass Equality, one person appointed by the Massachusetts Teachers Association, one person appointed by the American Federation of Teachers, Massachusetts, three persons appointed by the Massachusetts Chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, two persons appointed by the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network of Boston, two persons appointed by the Massachusetts Public Health Association, and three persons appointed by the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents. The membership of the commission shall include at least one parent of a gay or lesbian person, one high school student, one college student, one representative from an educational institution, and one representative of the mental health professions. Members of the commission shall be drawn from diverse racial, ethnic, religious, age, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic backgrounds from throughout the Commonwealth. Members shall be considered special state employees for purposes of Chapter 268A of the General Laws. The last line is the kicker. The Commission shall be an independent agency of the Commonwealth and shall not be subject to the control of any other department or agency.